from Paul's letter to the Roman Church. Chapter 8, verses 6 to 11. You'll find it on page 768 in the New Testament section of the Good News Bible. who live as the Spirit tells them, have their minds controlled by what the Spirit wants. To be controlled by human nature results in death. To be controlled by the Spirit results in life and peace. And so people become enemies of God when they are controlled by their human nature, for they do not obey God's law, and in fact they cannot obey it. Those who obey their human nature cannot please God. But you do not live as your human nature tells you to. Instead, you live as the Spirit tells you. If, in fact, God's Spirit lives in you. Whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to Him. But if Christ lives in you, the Spirit is life for you, because you have been put right to God, even though your bodies are going to die sin. If the Spirit of God who raised Jesus from death lives in you, then he who raised Christ from death will also give life to your mortal bodies by the presence of his Spirit in you. Hear what the Spirit is saying. That passage that Wilma read to us about Ezekiel's vision of this valley with dry bones resonates with me so, so clearly. Flesh that seems to be dead can rise again. You know, thinking of that valley of dry bones, of skeletons, whitened by the sun, made me think about the work of archaeologists. These men and women take infinite patience and microscopic pains to brush away the dust and earth of centuries, to find and dig out shards of pottery, other things, but often bones, dry bones of animals and of humans. They remove the bones noting precisely where they were found and in what kind of position. And they work scientifically, but also with their imaginations and creativity, <clears throat> to try to discover what these bones mean. Last summer I had the privilege of visiting Pompeii in the southern part of Italy. That city that in the year 79 was completely covered by dust from the eruption of the volcano Vesuvius. I was amazed 
to see how not only the buildings, the streets and the squares, the homes and the shops, but also the inhabitants have been preserved in the dust from that sudden eruption that took place 1900 years ago. There were cases displaying men and women and children preserved in positions which show quite clearly what they were doing as the clouds of dust descended on them and the volcano buried them. Some were sleeping, some were kneeling, others were walking or running. It was possible from these dry bones to learn so much about a community that was prosperous, alive, and flourishing so long ago. The bones, the teeth, the location and positions of the findings revealed the sex, the age, the general health, the diet, the diseases, injuries, and habits those citizens who died nearly 2,000 years ago. <clears throat> I was reminded of that visit when I was reading this passage from Ezekiel. What would an examination of our spiritual bones indicate this Lenten season? What would we find out about our spiritual maturity if we were able to examine our spiritual bones? Would we show a deficiency or a substantial sub spiritual diet? A lacking in study, in reflection and prayer? Would it show a meaningful relationship with our God? What would we find out about the richness of our spiritual lives? How sincerely do we long for and pray for the gifts of the Spirit? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. What would be our answer to the Lord if he spoke directly to us and asked, can these bones live? Can we honestly give the humble answer that Ezekiel gave? O oh Lord God, you know. To God's great offer of love and mercy, how would we respond? What are the words that we need here at St. Andrews for our life in community today? And what words do we need to hear for the life of our church? How do we open ourselves to this living breath, the reviving wind of God. God is so willing and eager to breathe into us and to fill us once more with that transformation that allows us to be a living part of the kingdom. May God help us to envisage our spiritual bones with new flesh and blood. We ask this especially at this time of the year when we work with the Spirit to prepare ourselves for the resurrection of Jesus and our own resurrection. The African-American spiritual cries out, them bones, them bones, them 
dry bones. Give thy nerve, his bones, his dry bones, gonna rise again. This assurance can underline all our living. This rather gloomy picture of a valley full of dry bones, in fact, is a picture of hope because into that valley comes the breath of God. Into that valley comes the spirit, the wind of God. Just as that same spirit can revive and transform each one of us and all of us together. God continually challenges us to read the significance of the bones and then offer them up to God for the breath of restoration, the breath of resurrection. <clears throat> The breath of God doesn't make us automatically good. Let me end with a quotation from Martin Luther. This life, therefore, is not godliness, but the process of becoming godly. Not health, but getting well. Not being but becoming. We are not now what we shall be, but we are on the way. May that Spirit of God breathe into us that we may in fact experience that transformation, that restoration, that resurrection.